Hey everybody, welcome back to another quick tie here with Tim Hepworth, Fly Fish and Bulver Outfitters, and Thursday night live fly tying. We want to thank Rocking on Fly Shop for bringing this quick tie to you guys today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. We're going to be tying up the woolly bugger today, the beadhead woolly bugger. We're going to take you through that pattern. Great pattern to have in the box. I'm going to be tying out of my season five kit. You can still grab one of these today if you'd like. Head on over to www.flyfishingboarder.com backslash TNLS5 and you can pick one of those up today. So if I'm going to go in there, I'm going to grab out this guy here, my season five, episode five kit. You see you got two different packages in the back. We're going to grab the one that says beadhead bully bugger. Let's get out that material and head on over to the vise. All right, if we do everything properly, it should look something like that or like this. Focus up, there we go, that's what it's gonna look like. Uh, a very good pattern to build uh, some of your skills in fly tying. So let's uh, let's get to it and see what we can do. Tell a joke and leave that in. All right, gonna tell a joke. Don't have a joke to tell, but um, something about a woolly, something's woolly. What can we talk about that's woolly? A woolly bugger, woolly mammoth, woolly. This is awkward for me. Hurry up and do what you're gonna do so I can get back to what I'm going All right, we're back, folks. This is Tim Everett here. All right, let's move on over to the vise. Go ahead and get your bead and uh, your hook put together. Remember, you need to probably mash down that barb to get this bead on the hook shank. So go ahead and do that and then get it fixed in your vise. Good and secure. If you're like me, make sure, and it's, you're very anal about it, make sure that's perfectly level as well. Before we put any thread on this hook, I'm going to grab a little bit of this lead wire that's in your kit. We're not going to use a whole bunch of it. More what I like to use this for is to seed that bead up against the, the top there. So I'm just going to grab a piece here, do a few wraps, nothing too crazy. I'll use up this wire just because I've got it on there. But that was about a two inch piece, nothing too wild. We're not trying to cover all the way down. This will build a nice little taper up to the head as well. But more than anything, we like this to shove up into that bead and hold that bead in place so it's not gonna go anywhere once we do some tying. So what I'm using today is I'm using some UTC 140 uh, in this kind of bronzy, dark brown color. Um, anything dark is gonna work just fine. I'm gonna get my thread started just behind those lead wraps. Okay, I'm gonna put a few thread wraps down, trim out that tag, and then I'm just gonna work a nice thread base. Okay, up onto that wire, making sure it doesn't move anywhere, and down into the bend. So don't have to perfectly cover everything up, it's more about that lead not moving. Then let's head on back to where that barb used to be. I'm just going to spin my thread and cord up my thread a little bit. I come forward a little ways. We don't want to be down into the bend, we just want to be at the edge of the bend. So I'm right about there. First material we're going to stick in there is going to be a piece of marabou. So grab one of the pieces of marabou you got out of your kit if you're tying out of the kit. And don't forget guys, if you are tying out of your kit, you can still find the recipe for this also on our website where I told you to grab the kits from. Uh, there'll be a full material list for you there as well. So the traditional way of tying this, I'm gonna pull all of this down, kind of till I get to those, you can tell there's a different uh, density in the tip of the marabou. Although I like it and I leave it on when I'm gonna be fishing, we're gonna tie this kind of as traditional as we can. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna use my scissors, not to cut, but to push my thumb against the material and try to tear all of those off. So I do that. And what I'm left with is just more the puffy portion of the tips instead of that more fine tip. Okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna size this guy up. We want it to be roughly a full hook shank in length as our tail. So somewhere right about there, measured off the front. I'm gonna translate that back to there, switch over my hands, get a nice thread wrap down. Now I'm just gonna work some thread wraps forward, making sure that stays in place. And I'm gonna try to trim this off right about where that lead wrap stop. It's gonna create that nice little taper for me, like a little ramp right up to there. I'm gonna come in here, work the rest of the base of that feather into there, and then bring this back forward, okay? Now that I'm back, the back of the fly, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this copper wire we have in our kit, okay? Got a nice long piece here. This is what we're gonna actually use to fix our hackle up the fly here momentarily. So I wanna make sure that's good and secure. I'm doing it on the near side of the fly towards myself. Just kinda have it sitting back and out of the way. Now I'm gonna tie in 
some chenille. So you got some of this olive colored chenille in there. Obviously there's so many variations to color you could do on this. You could use cactus chenille, you could use this variegated chenille, whatever it is, you uh, dealer's choice. We're gonna use some chenille to wrap up here. So I've just cored out and got, exposed the, the, the wraps that are, or the thread that's in the middle of the chenille. Okay, and I'm gonna get that spin my thread towards my hand as we know that causes my wrap to jump rearward. Do that, I'm gonna secure that down and I'm gonna take my thread all the way forward up to the bead. I'm gonna do a little half hitch there. Tying on the Norvice, I'm able to just get my stuff out of the way so I like to have that back there. And then I'm just gonna take this and palmer forward. So taking that chenille, just doing touching wraps. Okay. Trying to keep as kind of even underbody as possible, not super crucial, but just for the appearance of the pattern. I'm gonna work that all the way forward, right to the bead, okay? I'm not gonna worry about leaving too much space there because this chenille will kind of compress as I put thread wraps on it anyways. So remember, wrap in front, wrap behind, and repeat. And then we can go ahead and trim that out. Okay, get rid of that. I'm gonna take a few more thread wraps just to make sure that little butt end of the of the chenille gets secured and it's not gonna go anywhere, okay? So at this point, that's what I'm left with. I really only have one more material to put on. Um, and a lot of times in streamers, we put the hackle on the back and work it forward, but we're actually doing it in reverse, okay? So we're gonna put the hackle in up here at the front and put it back and then allow our wire to secure to bring it forward. So I've got here some saddle hackle, you can have bugger hackle, whatever you want kind of appropriate the size depending it doesn't really matter it can be a little bit bigger at the top top into the fly so what I like to do is I come in here I'm gonna grab the fluffies and pull them out of the way I don't want to work with those uh, lots of times we tie a hackle in by the tip but this time we're gonna tie it in by the butt end because we are starting at the front of working back we want it to taper in size so my the fibers of this hackle are longer at the butt section so we'll tie it in that way first as most as always almost we're gonna put the underside of that hackle facing back down the fly I'm gonna secure that right behind the bead so thread wrap over top then underneath and repeat kind of as always we want to make sure that that is not gonna pull out once we start taking wraps rearward with it so I'm gonna secure that down now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do a little half hitch, get my thread out of the way again. And now when I do my first wrap, I want to do one complete wrap all the way around 360 so I have my collar. Okay, got to create that collar before I start going back down the fly. And then I'm going to palmer down the fly, just nice even spaced with the hackle. If you moisten your fingers a little bit, you can always get that marabou to stay out of the way has a way of soaking up water and kind of cooperating when you add a little bit of moisture. Now I'm going to take this all the way back to right at the base there where I tied in that marabou and now I'm going to grab my wire and I'm going to bring my wire over top going the opposite direction okay because I need it to grab and make that securing wrap on the first time around and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to palmer this back forward and you'll see that I'm gonna move it in and out to try not to trap any of that hackle that we just put on. And you'll notice that this is now cross wrapping over top of the stem of that feather and that gives this fly a ton more strength. So if I catch a fish on and its teeth get into that feather, it could break the feather and it would all unwind. Whereas this way, the whole feather is being individually secured constantly off the fly. I'll bring my thread back in. I'm gonna get a thread wrap in front, thread wrap behind. I'm gonna repeat that process, making sure that wire is not gonna go anywhere. Now, either go ahead and grab uh, your pair of Dana scissors, or you could helicopter it off. I'm just gonna grab these scissors here. This will dull your scissors, so don't use a good pair. So I got the old junky ones for. And now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whip finish this fly right here. like so. I'm going to trim out that thread. I am going to put just a small dab of some UV. I'm using uh, Bone Dry by Solarize here. I just want to put a small dab on the thread that I can see there. And that way I know this isn't going to go anywhere. 
appears real quick, it's real thin. Touch that with the torch. And there you have it guys. You can see how that taper worked out quite nicely. All I gotta do now is go in and trim out the stem of that feather that we left at the back. And that is your bead headed boy bugger. If you haven't fished one, I would be shocked. If you've ever fly fished, you've probably seen this pattern. It's an old oldie and a goodie, so keep it in your box. Again, everyone, this is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bowler Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. This has been another quick tie. If you're part of the replay squad and you're watching this right now, please drop a comment. As always, you know you have a chance at winning some prizes. Like and subscribe, hit that little bell, and what it's going to show you is every time we have a new video come out. All right, guys, I will see you in no less than a week for another pattern.